Hello everyone. We are waiting for Dr. Gino to join. Good evening. Yes, yes, Dr. Jinu is here. Hello, Dr. Jinu. Hello. Hello. So we'll wait for two minutes and then begin. We'll wait for people to join, I think. Okay. Okay. Fine. Now let us begin. Few of them already here. Hello, everyone. Good evening. So before we begin, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Jinu. Uh, actually, we have both are graduated from the same college, uh, that, that is STM College of Naturopathy and Yogic Sciences. And after completing BNYS, Dr. Jinu has completed her uh, master's in uh, nutrition, and she is working currently in Kaginele Naturopathy Ayush Center, that is uh, Naturopathy and Yoga Center, which is situated in Haveri. Uh, so Dr. Jinu has been a part of Nisargamini Sirsi as well and she is working associated with them uh, now Nisargamani itself uh, that is the Haveri branch she is working there. She is an expert in gut health. She has treated many uh, gut disorders and also autoimmune disorders. So that is why we chose Dr. Jinu to be here today. Because a lot of people are asking continuously about gut health and we are seeing everyday basis that people are suffering with digestive disorders. So that is why we chose topic gut health. That is nothing but the digestive health. So Dr. Jinu will uh, highlight more about it. Uh, Dr. Jinu, would you like to say something to our audience? Uh, hello. Ma. So thank you for... Uh... Uh, making me a part of your uh, video session today. So, yeah, as she told, now I'm uh, working in the chief medical officer in uh, Kim's Eye Center in Kaginale. Here, I am mainly focusing on the gut and the gut related disorders like uh, gastritis, IBS, or all any autoimmune conditions. So, here we will, whoever the inpatients or OP patients, whoever will be coming, will be taking a brief history of their gut health and according to their gut we will be uh, giving them the treatments so shall we start the session yes definitely we'll start the session before we speak about gut health i think many of them wouldn't know the word gut so would you clarify that gut means what and all organs come onto it and what are we trying to speak here actually huh. So when we speak about gut as such, so gut is the, it is an emerging science, we can tell. So gut is also is an organ, like our eyes, uh, ears, mouth. Gut is also an organ. The organ which includes all our, which means the digestive tract, which and all the organs are involved in the digestion, say from the mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum and anus. So the entire digestive tract together we call it as the gut. So the main organs of the gut includes all these uh, organs plus some uh, organs which will help for the digestion, the digestive juices, digestive enzymes, all the secretions together we will call it as a gut. And the main members of this gut is nothing but the gut bacteria. And we'll be discussing about them in the later session. Yeah. So when we speak about gut, basically it is the digestive system. What are yes. the organs are involved in digestion? They all uh, together we call as gut, and that is why we uh, together call it as gut health. Because yes. gut, as she said, gut is not only related to your digestion process; it involves many other 
uh, it influences many other aspects of our body. So instead of just telling it as digestive health, we are telling it as gut health because it influences other health as well. So yes. before we go further into topic, let us know why this gut health is important. So why it is important? Because there are so many other functions of the gut. I, as I told, not only the digestion, our immune systems, the mainly the 90 percentage of our immune cells are located in the gut itself. So the immunity of our body is being controlled by the gut. That is one. Another thing, the brain hormones. So 90 percentage of the brain hormones is uh, secreted in the gut itself. So only we will call the brain, uh, gut as the second brain. So the gut hormones like uh, the brain hormones, uh, there is one hormone called as serotonin. So 90 percentage of this serotonin is uh, produced in the gut itself. So it will act as a brain uh, hormones, means happy hormone. So that is also released in the gut. So the regulation of the immunity and the secretion of the brain hormones and the decomposition of the waste products, absorption of all the nutrients, so etc. So, so many functions are there. So our gut health is very important because uh, almost all the metabolic activity of our body is being controlled by the gut and the organs present inside the gut. Yeah, basically our digestion or whatever the gut is there, it influences our mindset, our emotional levels. Like she said, it acts like a second brain. And we have seen that when we are depressed or we are sad, we are not feeling hungry, right? They both are interconnected. Yeah. Or when so it, that, that, that one the example, if we are not passing poop in a day, we can find out that you will end up in depression. Yeah. Our mood will will not be very pleasant if you are not passing the motion yes. uh, early morning or in a day. So that is a direct example for the relation between the gut and the our mood. Yes, exactly. So if we uh, don't pass our soul, that is our digestion is improper, we'll have uh, depression and all of these symptoms. And there are many yes. disorders as well which we have seen that it aggravates with stress and they both are interlinked. I think further we will speak about those disorders, digestive tract disorders. And mm. next, uh, like after we speak about gut health is important because not only for digestion but also our brain activity and other disorder, our immunity and all of this. Uh, so how can we define that our gut is healthy? Hmm. So that is the perfect example. Just now I told about our poop. So whatever the food, every day we will be having food, isn't it? Whether it is, whatever it is, in a day we will be having the food. Whatever the food we are having, it should be break down properly. It should be digested properly. All the nutrients should be absorbed. After absorbing all the nutrients, it should get eliminated properly. So... When we can tell a gut is healthy or your gut is health, just by uh, easily by looking at your poop or the stools. If you are seeing your stools or how is your bowel movement, easily we can tell whether our gut is healthy or not. So how should be a healthy poop looks like? So things it will be odd, but it, that is the perfect example or the uh, exactly how you can find out your gut is healthy or not. Every day, immediately after getting up, whether you are able to pass your motion or not, that is the first thing what you need to see. Second, the how it is, the form of the motion, whether it is semi-solid or it is a loose, watery motion or it is very uh, difficult to pass the motion, whether you need to give pressure to pass the motion, that it depends on the form of the motion. The third thing, whether you are getting complete satisfaction after the motion. Most of my patients, whoever is coming as OP, their major complaints will be, they will pass the motion, but they, they will not feel the satisfied motion. They will feel an incomplete motion. Little more it is there, yet to go. That kind of feeling should, feeling should not be there. So that is an incomplete motion. That is the third thing what you need to see. Fourth, obviously, the gas, bloating, uh, there will be a... If, my, some of my patients will be complaining, I'll be having this much only. Little with the food also, my stomach is coming up like a balloon. So that is called as bloating. So in uh, very minimum food also, whether your stomach is getting upset, bloating, gas. 
so see all your abdominal symptoms how you are feeling after a meal or how your poop is or the motion is so looking into this you can find out whether you are gut is healthy or not this is the best way to find out whether your gut is healthy or not that's one thing then uh, as i told the functions of the gut so there are so many functions of the gut this is only one thing what i have told you can see how is your mood you can correlate with that if you are feeling very depressed all the time if you are not able to concentrate properly if you are getting uh, as you are very short tempered person depends on your character also but for silly things and all if you are getting very much upset you were not like that before but all of a sudden you have changed you are how is your moods that also we can relate to gut because as i told serotonin the happy hormone is released in your gut itself so if your gut is not healthy your serotonin production is not going to be proper and you cannot be happy or you cannot take any problems in a positive way so in that way also you can find out whether your gut is healthy or not another way you can uh, uh, you can just see how your immunity is when you are exposing to the dust how your body is reacting obviously everybody will get sneezing when you are exposed to the dust because it is the body's immune mechanism but if a person is getting continuous sneezing say like uh, more than 6 to 7 more than 6 times or 7 times they are getting continuous sneezing which means there is some abnormality of their immune system the immune system is behaving little hyper hyper sensitivity of the immune system we will tell so the immune cells as i met told before it is also present in the gut itself so see your immunity how your immune system is uh, behaving so there are so many factors to say whether your gut is healthy or not so in uh, a single sentence we can we cannot tell the gut is healthy the main thing what i will be seeing whether my patient's gut is healthy or not will be asking about their motion history how is their motion whether is there mucus in the motion or blood in the motion how is the form of the motion whether you are getting satisfied motion so these uh, questions will we can easily find out whether a gut is healthy or not yes. so basically if a uh, body faces any of the health issues it is somehow related to gut if body is facing yes. any immune problems or mental issues or like depression and all of that or some physical issues all of this somehow they are interrelated and somehow that shows that the gut is not healthy if we are completely happy like uh, what i am remembering now is the definition of health itself yeah like mm-hmm. uh, physically and socially mental well being Yes, yes, yes. It is there. You will. You are. It says that you are healthy. Health is being physical, mental, and social well-being. So gut defines that. If you are physically, mm-hmm. mentally, and emotionally fit, that means your gut is also healthy. That is how yes. we can say that health is beginning from the gut itself. That is yeah. what I understood from this. And the next question is somewhat covered in this. The next question I wanted to ask is if our gut is not healthy. what are the problems we are going to face and what are the complications hmm so yes as you have clearly told all the diseases starts from the gut according to the ayurveda or naturopathy we will be telling all the diseases starts from the gut so 90 almost 90 percentage of all the diseases it will be starting from the gut itself so i already told what and all are the complications or what and all are the uh criteria to tell that your gut is healthy or not so if you are having these many symptoms which means your gut is unhealthy and an unhealthy gut is going to give you these many complications number one bloating as you as i told already with little amount of food itself you will feel fullness you will uh, feel like your stomach is coming up like a balloon so that heaviness of the stomach abdomen we will call it as a bloating that is the first symptom which you are going to get second thing is gas either you will be getting continuous burps or the continuous flatulence with smell bad smell so that is an another complications or another symptom which you can tell your 
uh, gut is healthy or uh, unhealthy and uh, third thing uh, as i told the gut starts from the mouth itself the we can start from the mouth so the mouth the disorders bad order so the halitosis we will be will call so halitosis or bad order is the result of a unhealthy gut itself so there are, there may be two reasons one reason if your oral cavity oral health is not good if the bacteria are more unhealthy health, bad bacteria are more if you are not brushing properly so that also can cause bad order even in uh, the extreme uncontrolled diabetic patients also will end up with bad order so that is another complications what you have to rule it out so at same time if your gut health is also if it is not healthy also you will end up with bad order so that is the first thing what you can tell second in the mouth itself if you are getting recurrent mouth ulcers that also shows that your gut is unhealthy and looking at your tongue itself uh, the uh, tongue diagnosis that is a worst topic so now i'm not going into that so if you're seeing the tongue also you can find out whether your gut is healthy or not so these are the reflections where your uh, mouth tells whether your gut is healthy or not coming to the stomach we will all be knowing the condition called as gastritis so um, gastritis or hyperacidity so that is also a gut related disorder if your gut is not healthy if you are having um, more number of a bacteria called as h pylori or helicobacter pylori so that is the 90 percentage of the uh, root cause or the reason for the gastritis stomach issues so i am telling only pointing out only one one issues not everything it will uh, so the coming to the small intestine there is a condition called as ibs irritable bowel syndrome so as the name is it is not a disease or we cannot tell as a particular symptom it is a syndrome there is a group of symptoms you are going to get if you are having ibs so some of the symptoms in that is frequent motion immediately after having food you will feel like passing motion there are some uh, patients if if they drink a glass of buttermilk even if they drink one glass of water even if they drink one bowl of soup also immediately they will they want to pass motion so that is one symptom second is abdominal pain third is mucus in the blood or weight loss or stress depression for small small things they will be getting very irritated they don't know how to control they even if they wanted to act positively also they won't be able to react positively so these all are the some symptoms together we will call it as ibs there are three types of ibs one is constipation dominated they will not be able to pass motion at all second is diarrhea dominated they will be having loose watery motion third is a combination of loose motion and constipation alternate diarrhea and constipation so there are three types of ibs these all are the small intestinal uh, mediated diseases and the coming to the large intestine mainly we will call auto there are so many auto immune disorders auto immune means our body immune cells is our own body cells is attacking our own body cells or organs so we will call it as auto immune disorders there are so many disease conditions like uh, psoriasis rheumatoid arthritis ankylosing spondylosis sle myasthenia gravis etc there are ulcerative colitis so all these are almost large intestinal issues so these are the very uh, difficult challenging cases also because in uh, all the medical science or in everywhere all the it, will, it is telling that it is incurable and the reason for the autoimmune uh, diseases are still unknown but the recent studies or the emerging science called as the gut science tells that 90 percentage of the autoimmune disorders is the cause of unhealthy gut because i have seen in my patients if i am concentrating their gut if i am treating their gut they are getting relief from psoriasis they are getting uh, rid of ulcerative colitis they are now able to uh, even uh, stop the steroids also yes. so uh, so the main uh, may think to be in concern for autoimmune conditions also is the same gut itself so these all are the complications 
some of the complications i have not mentioned everything these are some of the complications that you are going to get if your gut is unhealthy so when we spoke about we came to know that there is uh, like every organ can be related to some of the other disorders if our gut is unhealthy and uh, you also mentioned about bad bacteria so what yeah, is yes. good bacteria and bad bacteria uh, some details about yeah. that. so our body have both good and bad bacteria it is not not like uh, we have only good bacteria our body have already so mill trillions of bacteria uh, viruses fungus everything our body is having and our body have a very good immune system to uh, maintain the uh, these numbers also if anything is getting more in number our immune cells are the first one who will be attacking that so we need not have to go for any uh, medical interventions immediately in the future we have to but if in in uh, uh, initial stages and all our own immune system will be attacking or protecting them so when our the number of good bacteria is the in our body itself we will be getting through the uh, mode of delivery that is the first time when our body is getting exposed to a bacterial environment so uh, in a c section born kid the varieties of the good bacterial exposure will be very less compared to a normal delivery kid a vaginal delivery kid they will be having they are exposed to a good set of good number of bacteria from the vaginal fluid they, if they are drinking the vaginal fluid so the good number of bacteria the body the kids body is being exposed that is the first second thing is the breast feeding so, so the breast feeding kids will be having the bre- uh, breast milk contains millions of prebiotics so prebiotics is nothing but uh, we will be discussing it later prebiotics are the food for these gut bacteria so the bacteria is being exposed for it when it uh, we got those good bacteria from our uh, mother's uh, body second is the we are feeding we are uh, feeding it with our uh, breast milk third is the environment where we are growing see the uh, village kids they will be very less prone to get allergy less prone to get asthma are very less prone to get all these autoimmune conditions because they are being exposed to the soil all the time their body is exposed to very good set of bacteria same time a kid being grown in a very flat or a very clean environment their body exposure to the bacteria are very less that you can easily find out they compare the allergy uh, uh, prevalence in american kids and uh, ours americans are uh, they are very clean environment and uh, they will be more prone to have getting ground nut allergy nut cashew allergy all these kind of allergies because the environment where the kids are being exposed are different so the good number of bacteria we need because in order to fight because every day we are being exposed to millions and millions of bacteria we are going out we are exposing to the environment we are having food from outside so in all the sources there are chances of entering bad bacteria into our body so in order to cope up or in order to fight with these bad bacteria our body should contain a very good number of bacteria so and uh, in further session i will be explain how this the number is getting uh, decreased and all okay so we can conclude that Uh, we have both good and bad bacteria, and yes. if we have good bacteria uh, more, then we are able to fight this bad bacteria. It may be yes. we are exposing ourselves to virus or any other bacteria around us also, and also within us. If we have good amount of good bacteria, then these will destroy that bad bacteria and keep you in good health. That is what the uh, line of correction is. And we had a question. I think we can take, take it at last. Like nowadays, people are telling right to take probiotics uh, and prebiotics everywhere. Like every supplement is having it, and they are telling for weight loss it will help you take. So is it okay? And how is it related to weight loss? Gut bacteria and weight loss. 
ah yeah the actually now it is i told you know it is an emerging science now everywhere this uh, trends of probiotic drinks or probiotic chocolates pre probiotic uh, cakes everything it's been a, becoming a trend now so there is a relation between this uh, uh, gut health and obesity because in uh, america i guess they have done one uh, research studies in uh, two set of mice in that they have transplant fecal transplantation they have done from an obese rat and one uh, slim uh, rat and this in the fecal trans after the fecal transplantation they have fed the same food itself and they have found out that who was having the feces of the obese mice they end up with obesity and with the slim they in the same diet itself they maintain the same uh, weight itself so they have proven that there is something which our uh, gut the uh, direct relationship between this gut health and this obesity or the increased body weight so after following this research studies then it have become a trend of the gut health drinking this prebiotic will help in weight reduction this probiotic will help in the weight reduction after that further further studies yet to be done it's not a final decision but there have conducted a research study telling that there is a relationship between the gut and the weight gain gut and the weight loss but that is not only the one reason it could be a one reason among the five or six but that is also a reason for the uh, obesity that have been proven that so taking just a supplement for uh, probiotic or prebiotic supplement for weight loss is not advisable because no, 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 no. said it is one of the factor among many yes, so yes. there may be many other factors and next we yeah. talk about how to maintain a healthy gut or how how can it be treated if we have some gut disorders or my uh, huh. how, how to take care of the gut ha huh. that is very important because we will be forgetting to take care of our gut because uh, gut is we can tell that is our better house because we have made up of two types of cell human cell and bacteria can you all if human yeah human cell is lost the network was lost in between for a few seconds so can i repeat that okay so there i told no that human cells human cells is what we call father and mother that is just 40 trillion in the body rest can anybody please comment over here that is it my are you able to hear dr jinu no no you were not audible and uh, we cannot see you clearly as well there is some blur network issue yeah the voice is breaking right Uh, no no not we can't hear it is just breaking the voice is breaking still it is breaking the voice unable to hear and yeah. see they are telling yeah still we are not able to hear it so if it if it rains it is in a forest our hospital is in a forest i think you can go ahead and join back I think you can quit and join back. It may help. Yeah, now it's better. I think. Ah, uh, because here, if it, I told you, sorry for the 
in traffic because here if it rains our network will go you know all the yeah. natural centers will be in the forest <laughs> all natural body centers are in forest so it is difficult to catch network very difficult to get the network <laughs> Okay, now it is audible. Yeah. I think yeah. if it if it rains more, our network will go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So we will continue this session. Yeah, we were uh, speaking about how to correct our gut health. Ah, uh, gut health. That that I will uh, conclude and I will tell. See, we have as I told, we have two types of cells. Okay, our human cells and bacterial cells. So the thing is, if we are having food, we should not only Uh, give, uh serve our uh, uh, human cells we should give food to our bacterial cells also that is the only one message that i wanted to give to you if you are having rice chapati ragi roti uh, or uh, millets whatever all these are so insoluble fibers the food for our gut bacteria are soluble fibers okay so all the, in our south part in karnataka kerala Tamil Nadu, Andhra, and I don't know wherever and all. Almost in all the south parts, our major food is carbohydrate. Carbohydrate consumption is more. Whatever I have told, you no. Know, all the three times you are taking only that. Morning idli, dosa, upit, poha, avalaki, or afternoon rice or chapati or roti. Night also chapati or uh, rice. Very very little quantity of vegetables you will be taking. So all the three times. majorly you are focusing you only your stomach you are not feeding for your gut bacteria so you should never forget to feed your gut bacteria one time at least in a day so two times you feed for your human cells one time exclusively you feed only for your gut bacteria when i tell that you should not add any uh, rice or ragi or roti you should have only one bowl of fresh vegetables boiled veg or cooked vegetables one bowl of fruits one bowl of soup and any kind of proteins or uh, good fat in that so not and vaguely i am not telling to everyone if you are having under any medications or insulin or any other health issues you should uh, talk with your physician before starting this diet this is for an uh, healthy people i am telling prevention is better than cure how to make your gut healthy nothing but you should not forget to feed your gut bacteria that's all two times you have for your stomach one time you have food only for your gut bacteria if your gut bacteria are happy then you are also happy because we will tell no ibs is not an irritable bowel syndrome it is an irritated bacterial syndrome bacteria are irritated you are if you are getting constipation you will end up with depression if you are in depression you won't be able to focus in your life so better to feed your gut bacteria properly so that you can stay happily yeah so the gut uh, the question that uh, how to feed your uh, what to do for gut bacteria so that is what she is saying that if we take vegetables which has soluble fiber in it that is a food for <laughs> your gut bacteria that is good bacteria will grow when you give good food to it so by taking yes. the soluble fiber you will be able to improve your good bacteria and this is uh, there is probiotic and prebiotic i think people are getting confused with that and fiber mm-hmm. is a prebiotic that is it is a food mm-hmm. for your good bacteria yes. i think you will be able to explain you better yeah prebiotic is nothing but the food for your gut bacteria that we will be calling it as a term that is just a medical term for food for the gut bacteria prebiotic so all these vegetables almost all the vegetables and fruits contains uh, prebiotics for example apple contains a prebiotic called as pectin and onion contain a prebiotic called as inulin these all are examples so all these pectin inulin got Yeah, yeah. Now I think you can tell. Yeah, let me summarize it for all of you that uh, what she's telling is every fruit and vegetable has a 
फाइबर इन इट और वी कॉल इट एज प्री बायोटिक प्री बायोटिक इज द फूड फॉर योर गट बैक्टीरिया दैट इज अ गुड बैक्टीरिया एंड इट इज कंटेन इन फ्रूट एंड वेजिटेबल्स दैट इज वॉट डॉक्टर जीनू वॉज से and next let us hear about probiotics so am i audible now yeah now you are audible okay okay so prebiotics as i have told she explained it is just the food for the gut bacteria probiotics are the beneficial bacteria it is the live bacteria what we are giving say in day to day life we will be taking curd vitamins pickles not the pickles with the spicy the powder the normal Sort of fermented uh, pickled items. Fermented, all the fermented probiotic. So there are some prepared probiotic supplements. So you can tell that Yakult or uh, all those probiotic drinks are there. I am not. I am not. Probiotic is nothing but. The beneficial or the bacteria directly or uh, increasing number of the if you have this condition need take a probiotic supplement. You can easily you can include uh, uh, like a curd or buttermilk or yogurt any other. But if you have any physical like IBS, allergic colitis, psoriasis, anything in order. To increase the varieties of the bacteria, after the probiotic supplement. So that time it is always advisable to take any probiotic supplement. Not having any physical condition, need not have to take any probiotic supplement. If you are too physical, please get the probiotic like sour cream, kimchi, aloe vera, or uh, tea, or this. Uh, Third, but all these are probiotic that you can add in your day to day. Okay. The thing is, it was a bit uh, cut. Your voice was breaking, so I would like to summarize about probiotics. What she said is, uh, probiotics are the live bacteria in your gut, and uh, uh, the live bacteria it can be uh, it will automatically come with fermented foods. and also with curd with buttermilk and fermented foods as you said it pickles it may be it may be your kimchi sour kraut and all of this which is available there are also available probiotics in the market for example you might be uh, hearing about yakult so what she said is you need not take any of these probiotics available in the market because it is not advisable for everyone if you have some conditions like ibs or any your doctor is prescribing you probiotics for your condition you have autoimmune disorders where you have really very low good gut bacteria then you may need some supplements but otherwise you can take probiotics from natural foods like curd fermented foods like pickles kimchi and also uh, there are certain uh, fermented uh, like uh, she said aloe vera probiotic all of this you can take yeah we will uh, share you the aloe vera probiotic uh, thing later i think uh, so you can make it at your home and there are many probiotics traditionally available like in north india mm-hmm. they make kanji out of this uh, black carrots and uh-huh. beetroots uh, so that is also a probiotic there are drinks uh, there is food items which is kept fermented and then they eat so there are many kinds of sources of probiotic which you can take every day so that is what she was telling that you need not take any supplements uh, which is simply getting marketed out there without advice of your doctor okay mm. that is what she said and now coming to as you said these this prebiotic and probiotic uh, foods are important to maintain a good gut health so why we should not uh, Yeah, as you said if we have dig- indigestion or bloating that shows that our gut health is bad then why mm-hmm. should we should not take this common um, antacids which are available in market uh, why huh. should we choose this method see antacid is a million dollar industry actually see the recent statistics have told that the annual income of antacid 
in the 2021 was 3.3 billion dollars because it is that common for any gut disorders or any of the abdominal uh, things we will be taking any any thyroidy or pandi or for any with any tablets doctors will be prescribing the antacids for any gastric issues see there will be varieties of cases coming to my op every day there will be gastric patients there will be ibs patients there will be ulcerative colitis or pain whatever the con stomach conditions there will be my patient will be taking any one antacid so am i audible now yeah you are yeah, clearing yeah. the voice is not good because that is one uh, major mistake what we are doing see antacid is actually a uh, life saving drug also because see if your patient is having severe chest burning or uh, very uh, chronic gastritis or h pylori infection and all doctors do prescribe antacids because they should give because immediately we cannot give any relief for any of the uh, active symptoms if a patient is complaining with a severe chest burning we will tell you continue your uh, tablet whatever you are taking you just continue so we are not blaming any uh, drugs as such but you have to realize what is the uh, side effect of this ppis or antacids if you are taking in a long term it is not for one or two days every day whenever you are having any stomach discomfort if you are going for a antacid or thyroid if you take i will get to you so that you should not make it as a habit of taking antacids so uh, antacid misuse we can tell so i am not telling against the antacid the misuse of that if you are not taking in a prescribed way doctors won't tell you to take for years and years they will be telling you to take for a particular period of time but we ourselves will become google doctors so what mistake we are doing if you are having any any gas issues or any bloating any chest dis discomfort you will take one antacid feeling that it will reduce so what is the uh, adverse effect of this antacid i will tell you if you are having a hyperacidity what is the function of this antacid nothing but to reduce the acidity right if your stomach is producing so much of acid and acid is the opposite function of the acid so it will uh, remove the h plus or uh, proton pump inhibitor that is so it will inhibit the production of the acid so if you are taking for a particular period of time your acid production it, the antacid will help to reduce the acid production you will uh, feel relief from your chest burning or chest discomfort but if you are going to continue this antacid consumption what will happen our stomach should be acidic right our there are some organs meant to be alkaline meant to be acidic our stomach is meant to be acidic the ph of our uh, stomach is if i am correct it will it is around 2.5 to 3.5 i don't exactly but it is around 2.5 to 3.5 it is highly acidic our stomach should be acidic because our stomach releases an acid called as hydrochloric acid hcl everybody knows that so if our stomach is not producing sufficient hcl our food is not going to digest properly because the function of the hydrochloric acid is to break down the food digestion of the food is being done by hydrochloric acid now you tell me if you are continuously taking proton pump inhibitors or antacids what will happen your stomach acidity will increase in the sense your stomach is going to become alkaline because keep on reducing the Uh, acidity the ph will increase if one if it increase to alkaline medium what will happen the main first thing what will happen is whatever the food you are having it is not going to digest properly if you are having sufficient not having sufficient hcl the food is not going to break down properly you will end up with heaviness on the stomach again what you will you are going to do if you have having heaviness in the stomach if it is not bre breaking down properly the stomach food will stay there only you will feel heaviness you will feel bloating again you will take any antacid again the same thing again you will be taking the same antacid so these 
cycle or this chakra vyuha is going on that is the first thing there will be you will end up with indigestion first thing second thing it's not only the hcl have not only the digestion function another function of this hcl is hcl prevent the entry of any unhealthy or unwanted bacteria from the environment as i told you already we are not staying in home 24 hours we are going outside we will be exposed to with the outside world we will be having food from outside all the food whatever we are taking outside is not hygienic right so all the unhygienic environment where we are involving there uh, bad bacteria or the fungus or the virus is being entering into our mouth so hcl have the duty to kill all those bad bacteria so if your body is not having sufficient hcl after the daily consumption of antacid what will happen all these bad bacteria will go inside so easily you will get h pylori infection causing gastritis easily you will get the sibo small intestinal bacterial overgrowth leading to a condition called as ibs so there will be easily entry of this bad bacteria inside your body that is the second thing what is going to happen third thing is nothing but your ph will change So if your uh, stomach pH if it is changes, your intestine pH also will change. So what will happen if the intestine pH changes? All the anaerobic bacteria or the bad bacteria from the colon will start coming to the small intestine because that is the favorable place for the bad. If in alkaline medium, all the pathogenic bacteria grows. Pathogenic bacteria are nothing but the bad bacteria. Bad bacteria likes to grow in the alkaline medium. so once your uh, stomach or intestine is going to become alkaline because of misuse of ptis all these bad bacteria number will increase so that is going to lead a condition called as sibo small intestinal bacterial overgrowth sibo is not a disease but that is a condition which cause ibs it is just a condition causing ibs so if you are having any ibs issue any bowel issues you will be having this any antacid taking person you are any antacid patient taking patient he will be having bloating he will be having some or the other gas or motion issues it's nothing because of these three reasons whatever i have told so if you are taking any antacid you consult your consult doctor ask him how long you should continue how long how can i come out of this antacid it is the better way to as we commonly see people will start taking antacid because they have chest burning or hyperacidity and slowly they will start having issues like indigestion and bloating and ultimately mm. they will say i don't know if my problem is hyperacidity or indigestion ha uh-huh. ha hyperacidity will lead to hypoacidity yes. hypochloridria yes so uh, basically it is a all interconnected you are following this you are falling into this cycle that you are taking acid antacids reducing the acidity levels of your stomach then the food is getting rotten over there and causing bloating and causing other types of digestive issues and sometimes as she said bad bacteria enters into our body and we have mm-hmm. already reduced the acid levels in our stomach so that that bad bacteria will get a chance to grow in that mm-hmm. alkaline medium and you will end up with some major disorders like ibs or sibo and all of this like for commonly uh, we commonly quote this example everywhere right we store if we taste store your vegetables in a glass of water in a jar filled with water and if you store your vegetables in a bottle of vinegar there is a difference right if you keep it in water for mm. one week then definitely they get rotten not even one week it in one day it gets rotten but when you keep it in mm. little amount of vinegar also they will stay for years because it is mm. a acidic medium their bad bacteria can't grow uh, that is why uh, your vegetable stay fresh for years also that is same with our stomach if we make it alkaline more and more the food what we are eating is not getting digested and it gets rotten so that is why uh, unnecessarily if we are using this antacids it cause problem and i would also like to quote that recently there was a study saying that there are top 3 tablets 
which are disturbing your gut health i don't want to speak about other two but the one among them is this ppi or the antacid the pandy or whatever we are taking regularly that is one among them and it was shocking like people are not able to believe that the tablet we are taking to solve our acidity problem is actually harming your gut health so overuse of these drugs is definitely very harmful and it may lead to lot of your uh, problems further so it is always better to target your root cause and do the treatment uh, then uh, like commonly people have indigestion and acidity you know so what do you suggest like, like how do we know we have hypoacidity we have indigestion or we have too much of acidity what is the difference between that see hyper acidity the main symptom is you will get uh, chest burning the main uh, thing will be with uri uh, uri they will be telling every time ede uri illa hotte uri ben uri so that burning sensation with uh sore burping burps so that is the main uh, symptoms of hyper acidity which my patients will be complaining and almost everybody will might have already done the endoscopy reports because everybody will be coming to our uh, hospital as a last chance everybody won't come first into naturopathy they will try first allopathy then if they are not getting proper result then they will go to some other pathies and finally they will be coming to the naturopathy or the uh, ayurvedic natural medicine system. see so their doctors they will already all these uh, conventional diagnostic uh, systems are there that is all which is helping us to diagnose so we need allopathy system to diagnose for the uh, endoscopy or the uh, for the ultrasonography all the blood test mri ct all these diagnostic things will help us to diagnose whether you are having gastritis or not so in the endoscopy it will be clearly written andral erosions or pyloric infections or the gastritis whether h pylori is positive or not so the main that is the another way to diagnose the symptoms clinically symptoms what the patients will be telling will be the chest burn burning sensation in the chest chest pain which is radiating to upper back hands and all in close we can tell acidity and the heart attack both uh, uh, symptoms they will be telling the same yeah. and it is uh, uh, difficult to diagnose also between uh, whether they are getting mi pain or the acidity pain that is hyper acidity and hypoacidity that is another condition called as hypoacidity uh, the symptoms look same so whether if we i am giving all the hyper acidity uh, treatment protocols some of my patients won't get any result in that still they will be complaining bloating is there my chest burning have reduced but still i have bloating that have not reduced there is the point where we sh- you should find out whether our your patient is having hyper acidity or hypoacidity hypoacidity medica- is hypochloroethria because you ask your patient whether they were under any antacids or how long they have taken antacids obviously doctors will give antacids for hyper acidity or hypoacidity or bloating for anything doctors will be giving antacid that is for sure you ask them how long you have taken antacid more than 6 months or 1 year if they have taken antacid obviously their body will be having a condition called hypochloroethria or low acid level it is not hyper acidity and it is uh, difficult only for a doctor to uh, diagnose differentiate between hyper and hypo that we will only get to know if the patient with the proper case history with only with the symptoms or only with the blood reports or endoscopy reports we cannot confirm the patient is having hyper acidity or hypo acidity we should ask in detail the patients what and when you are getting bloating either you are getting immediately after the uh, food or when you are getting chest tightness whether it is sore burps or pain burps how is your motion after uh, asking a series of questions you can find out whether you are having hyper acidity or hypo acidity so these are the main symptoms of acidity upper gi issue whether it could be hyper or hypo or indigestion the main symptoms will be chest tightness chest pain burning chest or bloating or stomach pain 
so basically we need to understand whether our problem is with hyper acidity or hypo acidity and unfortunately mm. our modern science is not having that concept and that is why even in reports you cannot make out that uh, it is hypo or hyper acidity we cannot conclude with that it is because we can conclude only with the symptoms of the patient and history of the patient we can understand um, yeah. so it is uh, every system has its limitation as i would say she already mentioned earlier like autoimmune disorders according to modern science it is uh, the cause is unknown and the treatment there is no treatment for it according to them but according to ayurveda or naturopathy we have we know that autoimmune disorders are related to gut health and if we correct our gut health our autoimmune disorders can um, be better we can treat them so where one system will end the other system work will start and that is why nowadays that integrated concept is coming here we can't conclude that the system is good and the system is bad but everyone yes. has their own limitations and we should know whom to consult and where to take treatment from so understanding your problem is very important uh, and any drug or any herb also for that matter if you do overuse without any prescription it is definitely going to cause trouble it may be ayurvedic medicines also because people nowadays think they are herbal and unnecessarily they are popping on tripala ashwagandha all of these things so even that is bad i'm not telling only allopathic medicines have side effect everything has even one food item has side effect if we eat it more so be mindful of your treatment choice and i have got one question here then what is the best way to treat acidity i think in one line if you would like to summarize it i didn't i didn't get the question best way to treat acidity hyper acidity yeah right? just like ah. acidity ah so hi if the question is about hyper acidity the best way is maybe allopathic way of treating is through a triple therapy like they will be giving two and as and one antibiotic we also have formulated one triple therapy that is nothing but the natural antibiotics natural probiotics and natural diet this three things can easily give you cure for hyper acidity or gastritis natural and natural antibiotics if it antibiotics is necessary why because hyper acidity or gastritis 90 Five percentage of the gastritis is caused by a bacteria called as H. pylori. H. pylori bacteria is there in everybody. It's not only for hyperacidity patients. Everybody is having H. pylori bacteria, but in where in whichever stomach the number increases, they it will cause an infection called as gastritis. That's nothing but inflammation of the gastric lining. So the natural antibiotic I will suggest because it will help. kill all the unnecessary bad bacteria say this uh, h pylori that is easily available in uh, ginger ginger is a natural antibiotic so you can add uh, the ginger juice or uh, uh, this thing in any form and black cumin kapu jeerige we can will be telling uh, kannada so that uh, black cumin you can powder it so one spoon black cumin you can just mix in one glass of buttermilk and you can take or one spoon of black cumin you can just mix with uh, honey and you can take so there are other natural antibiotic so many so much is there i just gave only two examples these two you can take it as a natural antibiotic just to eradicate the virus the second thing is natural probiotic natural probiotic why because if in a society if we have good number of people in a very good number the people can do their action right so this is uh, applicable to your body also if your body have very good number of bacteria the bad bacteria cannot work properly so you should increase your uh, varieties of bacteria in your gut through probiotics the best probiotic which i will suggest for gastritis is yogurt buttermilk and we have found out one aloe vera probiotic just fermenting the aloe vera with the jaggery so sir you can personally text me i will explain it because so much is there to tell so uh, fermented aloe vera or fermented any fermented food 
like if you are having time to make all these kimchi kefir sour fruit kombucha and all you can take that or easily what you will is available is curd and buttermilk and fermented ganji see in our area in the uh, our ancestors and all what they used to do the leftover rice they will keep it, they will soak in water night so in a day how much ever they will prepare the leftover rice they will soak in water next day morning what they will do they will take the same ganji or the same food uh, they will add some uh, curd and one uh, this chilli that will that will be their main breakfast my grandparents and all used to take only that that we will call it as fermented ganji and all mm-hmm. fermented uh, ganji water we will be telling to our patients is nothing but the food or the breakfast which our ancestors were taking so that is the best probiotic for a hyper acidity or gastric conditions then the third one what i told is natural diet natural diet is nothing but with a a small portion of white rice a big portion of steamed vegetables and another portion of uh, fruits another portion of probiotics like curd and milk you are plain to should contain all these things balanced diet if you are devoid of what are the things that you need about this chapati wheat and wheat products gluten is a very bad uh, trigger for the gastric raw vegetables raw If, if, if it is salad also raw salad is not advisable for gastric conditions and all the junk food bread uh, biscuits uh, chips lays pizza burger all those kind of junk food the and sprouts obviously this uh, green grains dal all those things you need to avoid for a particular period of time you should add these many food so the natural antibiotic natural probiotic natural diet this is the best solution for hyper acidity or gastritis yeah if you have uh, like acidity now and then then it the simple and best way is as she said have a natural diet go for natural probiotics and also include good mm-hmm. amount of vegetables to get the prebiotics mm-hmm. and that would be uh, helping you to solve the problem but in case mm-hmm. if you have severe acidity for a long duration of time i would suggest it is better to consult an expert you can also contact dr gino or you can visit any of the centers and get a proper treatment for yourself where you are on a diet restriction for certain time and also mm-hmm. you will be able to uh, use antibiotics like she mentioned there are certain natural antibiotics which can help you to uh, reduce your bad bacteria and then after that you can go for a good diet in the maintenance so uh, anything lamely please don't follow there is a, there is scientific evidence for everything the positive and also negative thing and nowadays i'm seeing so many products in market even my patient tell for weight loss i'm taking probiotic and we don't know what strain see there are millions of good bacteria millions of strains so we cannot take some probiotic lamely and think that it is going to solve all the problems it is not going to be like that until and unless you have expert advice who is uh, already uh, used to uh, treat this gut disorders like dr jinu and her team is there so all of them you can consult and then go for any supplement don't fall for any marketing gimmicks you can also make prebiotics are available at your home food and even probiotics are there i think there is a question probiotic is best for hyper acidity and what is the strongest natural antibiotic best probiotic for hyper acidity which is easily available is curd and buttermilk that is easily available need not have to ferment all or the all fermented vegetables that you can make in home in 7 to 8 days to become ferment easily available and the best probiotic is curd and buttermilk itself strongest natural antibiotic is what i told i gave two examples now ginger and black cumin black cumin is very good because just only with the black cumin uh, some two three of my patients have got very good relief whenever they are having any h pylori infection i used to tell them to take just uh, black uh, cumin in uh, buttermilk they, they used to get three times they used to get very good relief but like it is little bitter in the taste 
Okay, fine. Any other questions you people have? Because digestion is such a big issue. Every day people are coming there saying every day I am taking medicines. Every day I am taking one pandy. It is okay. Even if we tell them that that is not doing any good for you, it is harming you. People are not ready to listen. Only when they end up with IBS or something like that, they will come back. So I think it is. Ah, uh, why? Because our generation people is not having sufficient time. Because yeah. everybody uh, sudden is sudden cure for all their disease conditions. All are in a rush. Yeah, exactly. That is causing more and more dis uh, disorders in us. Like there is a question like for la autoimmune disorders of like uh, related to large intestine like RA and all. What food hmm. can be taken? I think again this is going to be a vast topic when we speak about diet for RA. I think yeah, we can go work on it's your big gut big. health first. I think uh, work. Working on gut health first is better. Like what already Dr. Jinu told about how to maintain a good gut health by having what kind of foods to eat. She already mentioned. I think you can follow those first. And for particularly for RA, I think you need to consult an expert. Like hey, RA, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is, as you told, it is an autoimmune condition only. See, that is not a. What we have studied, or what till some of the doctors knows, is RA is a musculoskeletal disorder because the our shapes uh, joints joints shape will be getting changed, their walking pattern will uh, change. So everybody is thinking that that it is an auto musculoskeletal disorder, but actually rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune condition where the antibodies are released in our gut. So there is a research paper telling that. Rheumatoid arthritis is a condition caused due to the overgrowth of a bacteria called as Salmonella coprey in the large intestine. So, the, in the Ayurveda, there is a the the only one treatment for or the best treatment for uh, rheumatoid arthritis is nothing but the pasti. So, Ayurveda in pasti will be the treatment where which they will be giving for the rheumatoid arthritis condition. See, what is the principle of this pasti? Just to eradicate this large intestinal bacteria. Ayurveda is such a beautiful uh, science where everything is already told. The only one thing is that we are not able to correlate with all these things. We should compare. Doctor Abhishek has told no. The integrated science is the best way to get rid of, get cure of any disease. We should not blindly go for allopathy, blindly naturopathy, or blindly Ayurveda. There is an integrated science there. We should combine this. The Ayurvedic science is very beautiful. So the why why they are giving is just to eradicate this bacteria. But not only eradicate, then everybody should get relief after fasting. No, we should not eradicate. So not only eradication, fixing of the gut is important. There there is a place where naturopathy and functional medicine comes. If after eradicating, you need to fix your gut. Fixation will happen only with a particular green tea diet. So telling about the diet for rheumatoid arthritis, the entire there is no specific food for that. Entire diet should be changed, and that is a vast topic. So much will be there to speak about that. So you can personally contact me for the uh, diet plan for rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. I think you can consult her personally for any autoimmune disorders or gut disorders. to get a better understanding actually in between there was some network issue so i would like to summarize what she told uh, she was telling that in ayurveda whenever you come with an autoimmune disorder they will first give a basti basti is nothing but cleansing your large intestine so why they give because they will eliminate your bad bacteria and automatically it will help but unfortunately modern science is thinking that uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a musculoskeletal disorder and that is why they are not able to find a cure for it because it is related to your large intestine bad bacteria and that is why she was telling that ayurveda is beautiful science where they have explained the relationship between the gut and the diseases but the problem is nowadays people are simply telling that i follow ayurveda 
and they might not be doctors or what they are practicing we don't know namely we are taking medicines or on tv they are saying it is ayurvedic we are taking on the box it is written ayurvedic nowadays i'm seeing even if we are eating chewing gum on that they will write it is an ayurvedic medicine on toothpaste we are writing it as ayurvedic so people are thinking everything is ayurveda and blindly consuming it which is why you are having problems and you are not able to find the exact solution for problems but when you go to a consultant and you discuss your problems and get treatment i think they will get solutions for many of the problems hmm so i, I think we can conclude with this i think that this was a wonderful session dr jinu thank you so much for being here and uh, you have shared wonderful insights because this is a common topic where people will be speaking uh, about digestion digestive issues and they don't know what is the exact cause and what is the right solution for it also they don't know they are simply you know drinking antacid syrups or uh, popping in all this pandi and omes and all of this ppis without knowing its limitations so thank you for telling us there are natural methods to treat and completely cure gut disorders yeah thank you so much thank you ma'am uh, i thank you for calling me for uh, this platform and making uh, giving me a chance to explain whatever i was knowing so the only one thing i want to tell is you should go for the root cause treatment that's all for every thing whatever the any autoimmune condition everybody all doctors will be giving the same steroids for all the conditions or the same and that's it if you are going to the root cause you can uh, easily get cure of your disease so the only thing is to go for a root cause treatment exactly that is why this holistic medicines like uh, naturopathy and ayurveda are providing you complete uh, uh, solution for your problems definitely you can go for allopathy in emergency situations like right now you want to reduce your headache your pain you are popping painkillers that is fine but we have to understand the root cause of the problem and treat it may be any disorder i think that would be a take away message from both the naturopaths here that please concentrate on your holistic health and uh, treat the root cause rather than just going behind the symptomatic treatment thank, thank you so much everyone for joining and we both are on social media you can contact us anytime uh, with your queries and definitely we are going to respond uh, we may take time but definitely we will get back to you and uh, also you can uh, follow any uh, both of our pages so that you will get uh, knowledge about your health and how to maintain your health in a holistic way with this we will conclude the session thank you so much everyone to join and thank, thank you. you once again dr ji thank you ma'am thank you